Hi guys. Today we're going to we're kind of working on the case, the uh, uh, clutch cover case a little bit, and the oil injection. And I've got I've got another issue that is just from the parts are not the right parts. Uh, I think that if you've watched, if you've been watching my series at all, uh, you would know that a couple times I've talked about uh, you need a silver nut. You can still get this nut for your brake, but it doesn't come in silver. It comes in black. Well, I've got another example of that now. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Um, what I'm ranting about right now is the oil, uh, what do they call that, the union or banjo fitting nut, I think is what it is. Uh, this, the hole that's in the end of this is a different size. And see, this is an original screw. And this one is, is goes right here. And this is where your uh, check ball and spring go for your pump to keep bleed keep it from bleeding back off from the line going to the engine. And it requires a certain amount of pressure on it, but not a lot. And the issue is the spring will not go into this hole on the new one. It's too small a hole. Now this is what they sell. This is the part number for all the banjo fitting bolts on this. If you go to the uh, part seller or whatever uh, to look at the illustrated parts breakdown. It's the same one for all, for the engine, for the pump, everywhere. And I've got three or four of these, and they're all the same. The spring will not go into it. Now, what I found is just by using different drill bits that, let's see, a, this is a number 38 drill bit will go into the new one. And you have to go to a number 31 to get it to fit into the old one. Now let me take this apart so you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. I could have used the new or the old bolt, but I bought new ones because they had, uh, they'd already been, you know, they're finished. and I don't have to do it. Okay, now you can see. See the spring that goes in there? Be careful of that, those are not available. And why does it fit this, this one, this new one? Because I drilled it out. Here's what we've got to do. Uh, what I did was I stepped this up. I, I just set it in a, in a vise in the drill press in the milling machine. And I went at just small increments up until I got to this size. And as you can see, the, uh, the spring now goes into this one. But you need this preload, but you don't need uh, this much because that will not go in there. So you got to be careful on that or you're not going to get any oil to your system. Now one thing you need to remember is that if you'll if you take a look at the old one and you put your drill bit in there, 
I don't think you can see it. Let me get a flashlight here. You notice the hole. So you can still, with it, with the drill bit fully inserted, you can still see all, completely through the hole. It's not drilled all the way down to the bottom. So when you re-drill yours, you don't want to drill it all the way to the bottom. And what I what I did was I measured, I stuck the drill bit in there and scribed it and measured how far it actually goes in there. And my uh, my figure was point three four five of an inch. So that's what I did. I uh, these are very close to the same, uh, the old and the new are. So you just just set it up in a vise in a drill press and slowly go up on your drill bits until you get to your your final size of a number 31 and only go 0.345 deep that way it won't you'll have you'll still have the correct amount of preload for your spring okay I think that kind of covers that and remember that when you pull this apart there is a a ball in there too and that's on the Yamahas this is how they keep the oil from running back out of the lines down to the pump so uh, Suzuki's have a check valve up close to the uh, where it bolts onto the engine the oil lines that's how they do it but on this one that's how it works and uh, just I just thought I, I ought to tell people that this is another instance where you're getting sold something that they're saying is going to work it don't work and you burn your motor up if you don't uh, if you don't fix that in in this one uh, the one up on the engine where it goes into the 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 cylinder no problem but this one with the spring it is a problem so you need to be careful about that okay another item that is not it it'll work fine but uh, as you know when I bought these uh, cases for the 175 Yamaha they the cases didn't have studs in them and I ordered brand new studs and I'm sure there's somebody out there oh no we got black ones instead of silver ones well yeah that's true but I don't think that that really matters in this case uh, what what I have seen is some talk online about people putting studs in and they get chastised for putting them in wrong and what they're talking about is you see this end here it's flat see this end is domed or pointy so this end is the one that's supposed to go up so your nut will go will thread onto it your head nut so obviously the flat end goes in the case now just to eliminate those kind of comments uh, this is a brand new stud from Yamaha this end flat this end flat the only difference is there's a few more threads on this end and in my opinion this is the end that needs to go up for your nut you've got even with this installed let me let me get it over here even with this installed into the engine it won't go much further than that that's it it's you still have threads sticking out here so why have more threads sticking out down here 
I would want them up here just in case that you need that extra thread or two to tighten your head bolts up. Okay. Now, I'm sure that most people know this, but those that don't, in order to remove these bolts, uh, you double nut these things. You see what I've got here? You take these, put double nuts on them, and then tighten the, nut, the two nuts together. And then using the bottom nut, you turn these out. If it slips a little bit here, tighten it up some more there. But that's how you remove and install these studs. Any stud for that matter, that's, that's generally how it's done. But anyhow, I just wanted to clarify that because there's people out there that they, they get upset when you put these studs in upside down. Oops. So just to clarify, the uh, this is an old old original. It's got the pointy end that's supposed to go up, flat end that goes into the cases, and the brand new Yamaha bolts studs are flat on both ends. Okay, uh, let's move on to something else here. I've got, you can see I've got a lot of tachometer and oil pump parts uh, laid out here. Now, something a lot of people don't do when they're, uh, they're they have, have an oil leak at the tachometer. There is a, a seal, it's an O-ring, that goes in the bottom of this unit here. And that's the first thing that goes in. Let's just use this stud here to push it down. It goes all the way, goes all the way down. Then there's a little flat washer that goes on top of it. But see, this is kind of difficult to get, to get to, to, to get uh, it out. So a lot of people don't change that seal. And then here's this seal here they do change because it's easy to get to. But the next step is to put this sleeve in, this collar. And I mean, it's easy enough to put in. You just drive it in with a little plastic hammer or something. But the question is, how do I get it out? You know, if it's in there, well, I use a blind bearing puller. And these things just, they, the ends here, as you turn this, it expands them. So instead of getting in there with a pick or something and messing up the bushing, not sure whether those are even available anymore, you can just, this actually screws onto a slide hammer. And you just tighten this up till it's snug, and then you use the slide hammer if you need to to pull it out. In this case, I've had it out, so it's uh, it's pretty easily removed. And then you just loosen it up and slide it off. But that's how you do it, and that's how we're going to do it here when we put it together. Uh, what I'm I'm waiting on right now is my cases to dry. I just I painted them. I'm not real happy with the color. I just uh, when I was painting the Suzuki cases, I never never realized how many different colors of silver there is. And most of most of it you can't get silver. You have to get aluminum. And the aluminum to my to me is too shiny. So I've been all over town 
can't find. I, I bought ten cans, different stuff, and it doesn't seem to be the right thing yet. So I did. I went on the Yamaha, the vintage Yamaha site, and people were talking about DE 1615, which is a Duplicolor product. So I've ordered some of that. I'll see what uh, see what it does. You can't find Duplicolor in this town, so. Uh, you're just kind of stuck with mail order everything. So anyhow, uh, just a just a few little knit noy things that kind of knit noy me. So uh, we've got that covered. <coughs> and I want to show a couple other things here. Um, remember, I I I had got a seal retainer for the magneto side. I also have one for uh, this side. And it's uh, it goes into one bolt right here. And when you do that, make sure that you lock tight that bolt. And I'm going to go through all this when I put when I do all the clutch and everything. So uh, We'll get back to all that. I was going to show you the uh, blind bushing puller. This is the one I've got. It, it's a worthwhile investment. This pretty well covers everything that I've used on most cars and motorcycles. Uh, some of these bigger ones I don't use very often, but uh, the smaller ones always get used. And it's a pretty reasonable price tool. I can't remember how much this thing was. Probably wasn't much more than $30. But anyhow, it's a worthwhile investment, and uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches. I use them a lot for pulling out bearings out of the hubs on the motorcycles because uh, it's just hard to get in there and uh, get a punch in them. With this, you can pop one side out with this, and then remove the other side with a punch and hammer if you want to. I just just wanted to uh, let you know about that. All right, let's get this uh, rocking and rolling here. Uh, I've still got to tighten this up. I'll tighten it up when I get the clutch basket in. This is tight. All the screws have been Loctited here and they're all tight so we're good to go there. First thing we do is we install the uh, uh, washer here, and it's a, a 20 in the middle, 20 by 31 by 3. Now, some bikes actually had two washers hit. Here they had a 1 millimeter and a 2 millimeter. This one here has got the three, so it's all, all in one. And at that point, we've got the uh, spacer, and it goes with the uh, this area right here. This oil groove goes up. And then we've got our gear, put a little oil on it, and see how it meshes level here, and it doesn't touch the bearing retainer in the back, so everything is clear. Okay, then we put a little oil on the bushing on the clutch basket and you've got these cogs right here that are going to slide into those you're going to have to watch the gear over here on the crankshaft too to get that to get it all to mesh Get 
back down there. Okay, that's all in. Got a little stick up right there. First thing's going to go in is your your bearing. These two pieces together constitute uh, they, that constitutes a bearing. This is one item when you order it. But you get the, you get what I, I would call it the race there. And then the bearing. Then we've got a, a 20 by 38 by 2. Washer goes on next. Just like that. And we've got our hub. And I've got a new washer for that. Now I'm going to tighten up this crankshaft nut. I'm going to take a penny and put it in between these gears. Oops, wrong direction. And there you go. That'll deform a little bit. You're probably not going to spend it, but I. I use, use them out here once in a while for things just like that. I, I think I've already discussed the seal um, retainer here, but you can still get these. Um, I'd got one for both sides on this one. I think it was uh, if the seal came out back in the day, they could put one in under warranty, but they wouldn't put them in as preventative. So you, if you, uh, you know, if you wanted one like that as preventative, then you had to pay for it. I think that's how it went. And let's see here. I'm gonna put that on with an impact. Keeper. Oh, that's a good, that's some good metal that thing's made out of. Mm. Go ahead, 
All right, let's get our tack drive on. Oops, I'm going to put the spacer on first. Spacer goes on. I think that's how that goes. Pretty sure. I'm going to check it here as soon as I get it slid on there. And then we have a 10 by 16, let's see, 10 by 16 by 1 washer that goes on it. Had to make that when it was missing. So that's my, my handiwork there. Okay, I've had my um, all my plates soaking in here and it uh, it's a it's a real good way to keep everything clean that's probably everything's been in there weeks already so you just need to make sure that you keep all that clean and this particular one didn't have any of the cushions in them in it so I'm putting those cushions back in. I guess they they work fine without it, but uh, Yamaha put them there for a reason. They are kind of expensive. All right, we're going to start here with our steel plate. And then we're going to put a cushion on. And you don't want that to uh, bunch up on your twist. And your plates. And I, I do get this Tupperware just for the garage so I don't have to worry about the wife. Oops. Yeah, that's making a big mess. That's what rags are for. Paper towels in this case. I guess I kind of have you out of the field of view there. Trying to catch some of that oil 
into the container again. All right. And don't forget your, uh, your push rod here. We'll put the ball in. I think the ball's got to go in from the other side, but you've got to remember to do that. And get our screws going, screws and springs. Pull these down evenly if I can. Got them all tightened up. And we just have to remember that the, the ball and the push rod goes in on the other side. Okay, I'm, I'm going to work on this case a little bit, but I'm not going to finish it up because I'm still waiting on the paint. I'm just not happy with this color. So I'm not going to put the seal in here or uh, the pump in probably. I'm just going to get all the hardware in from the back. Okay, I guess the first thing I need to do here is get the seal in. Now this one is kind of strange because uh, the seal goes uh, closed in in because you're trying to seal out, seal the oil that's in here from going in there. So just pay attention to how that goes. And I'm just going to put a little bit of black RTV. Around that seal. So open in up. These go in pretty easy. Just push it in the best you can. And wipe that excess RTV off a little bit and then just give it a till it's flush with the surface. Then I'm going to 
put a little bit of oil in it. Just take a Q-tip and kind of run it around the circumference of it there. It's something wanting to some foreign thing in there. All right. Now we get our shaft. Put a little oil on it. Then you've got a washer and a snap ring. Things free. Then you've got a pin. It goes through the shaft, and then on the back side of the gear, you've got a place for the pin. Okay, it drops down, and you've got your star washer. And your nut. And I'm going to put just a little blue Loctite on that. Should be good. That star washer eats into the the plastic. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go with that piece. Now let's uh, take a look at the tack drive. I, I covered this a little bit a little bit earlier. Uh, first thing that needs to go in here is the new o-ring. I've got a little oil already on it. Just take something that's not going to poke it or cut it and push it down in there. Then you've got your little washer and it goes in there. Then your bushing. And it just slides down in there and I've got to I've got to get something to push push it down a little ways let's see maybe a, maybe a socket This one will do it. In a little ways. There, I think it's down. Yep. Down all the way. Okay. 
Then you've got your big O-ring that goes right there. So we've got our shaft and gear. And I'm going to put a little oil on both places on the shaft. <coughs> and a little here too. Just take my Q-tip and kind of get it around there the best I can. Slide it in. Make sure everything's free. A little more oil. And then a little oil in the Yes, kind of distribute it around. And we're going to put it in flat flat side to the front. Houston, we have a problem. I'm betting it's a little paint down in there. Let me clean that out real quick. Okay, yeah, it had a little paint in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in this way, just put it in into this piece already. And you should be able to feel that O ring. See, it's doing its job. And I've got some oil on the external one here. And again, I've got the flat part toward the front. And down she goes. Everything's free. And then we have or hold down. Lock, hold down, lock washer, screw. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go, I think. I think this is going to, I've got a little yeah, I don't want to leave that in there and paint it, so I'm going to stop right there. I can stick this on to keep the dirt out of it for now, and that's probably what I'll do. I think the paint should be here early next week. So let me, uh, let me just kind of put this on loosely. Things down. Well, maybe throw a screw or two in it just so it doesn't.
And yeah, I know I left the gasket out because I'm not not doing it for good. All right, let's uh, drop this thing down. And I think what I'll do is go ahead and put my studs in. Let's see, you can see that it looks like. So I'm putting the long threads to the top. We've already talked about the, the uh, original versus the new ones. The original ones have the taper at the top, so that it would go in like this, flat at the bottom. But the new ones from Yamaha are flat both ends. The only difference is a little more thread on what I'm calling the top. <clears throat> and I think I shall put a little bit of Loctite on that one, on these two. some blue let's see before I go too far here I'm going to stuff something in here these nuts could fall into that so we're not going to play that game. Okay, again, just tighten these up again one another. And in this case, you'll use the top one to install them. And that's all you need. Just, just snug it up. Okay, we got them all in. I'll clean up the excess Loctite there. And these don't have to be tight. They're not going anywhere. They're seated in just a little bit. All right. I think we're at just about a stopping point. I could probably put the stator in, but I think maybe I'll just save that. I've got a new vent here, so we can think, you know, put a little brand new one. Right down there where it ought to be. Okay, I got this turned around. I'm going to Loctite the screws into the uh, access hole here. They're not, they don't use a lock washer or anything, and that cover is made probably from nylon, so it's, you can't really grill a snug it. So we'll just throw the Loctite in it. should hold that. Now we've got to tighten up our neutral safety switch.
and our detent. And then we can toss our little clutch ball in and then the rod. Let's see here. Yep, okay. I'll just stick a little assembly lube on it. There we go. It's in. And we need to tighten our counter shaft sprocket up. There's that. And I think I'll wait on the, the stator. Um, I think that's about all we can do. So I think I'm going to call it quits there. And as soon as my paint comes in, I'll tidy the clutch cover up. And uh, We'll put the stator in and probably the, the cylinder and piston and all that stuff too. So, hey, if you could give me a thumbs up, it'd be greatly appreciated. And a subscription if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. Thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.